This is the source code to a small application. And maybe it's source code that you can't make a whole lot of sense of. Maybe you aren't familiar with the language or you aren't sure what operations are in the middle of its procedure. And actually, this is a small capture the flag challenge that I created for the recent fetch the flag CTF that I co-hosted with Sneak. This was a task in the warmups category called Rusty. And it says, we heard you were a bit rusty on the basics. So here's a small warmups challenge for you. Here's some code attached and it's output. Can you make any sense of it? Now, there are a couple clues here as to what programming language this source code might be written in, but say you just weren't familiar, say you didn't know. The thing is, I put this in the warm-ups category because it is a small, simple challenge if you use some of the resources that you have available to you on the internet, just like Uncle Google and Auntie GPT. That's right, there's no shame in using tools like ChatGPT or Generative AI to help you along in some learning, some education, some ethical hacking, some programming and some coding. So let's see if ChatGPT can figure out what is this code and what does it do? So look, let's keep this super duper easy. I'm just gonna copy and paste literally all of this code and go give it to ChatGPT. What is this code and what does it do? Let me add some uh, back ticks here just to kind of indicate, hey, this is the source code and I'll paste it all in. So I have this prompt for ChatGPT. Let's send it and let's see what it does here. This is given Rust code. It defines a small program that reads the contents of a file named flag.txt and encodes its contents into a custom base64 representation. Here's a step-by-step -step breakdown of what each part does. Now this is simple, right? It's base64. We've all seen base64, especially in Capture the Flag, one of that data format representation, some encoding of text or any data really. And ChatGPT goes and explains each and every part of it so we can get a better understanding of how this all comes together. Together. But ultimately, hey, now we can know this is just a simple custom base64 implementation. And we know it's Rust, so we could probably compile it and play with it if we wanted to. Super simple, super easy. If we don't have the compiler or everything that we might need to use Rust, we could just Google it. Hey, we could get Rust up and be able to just pull things down. This is again another a maybe sketchy curl pipe to bash, or SH in this case, but that will at least get Rust up ready for us. I'm inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine and I could just paste in this curl command to get Rust ready for us. Yep, let's go through the defaults and it'll set up cargo and everything that we need for a Rust development environment. Once that is complete, we can go ahead and get cargo, the Rust package manager into our path by pasting in, hey, just that source command to be able to add cargo in the current shell. And now that cargo is installed and set up for us, available in our path, we could simply use cargo init to initialize this directory as a Rust project. We'll create a binary package here and this will automatically create a source directory and a cargo.toml sort of definition for our project. But that source directory actually already has some main Rust source code, something that will just simply, hey, cat out a little, oh, hello world, display that to the terminal as a demo application. But we can go put our, hey, rusty source code that we saw in the place of that main.rs file. So that'll be the source code that we can build our application with. Let's go move that rusty file to the source main.rs. Now I could use something like cargo build to go ahead and compile that binary, and I can use cargo run to try and execute it. The thing is, this will error because it can't find, oh, the flag.txt file that would have been present probably on the author or challenge developer's machine when they were creating the CTF challenge. We could create our own maybe flag anything and create a uh, flag.txt, but uh, will that actually run that at the current directory context? It will. Okay, so this is the output from the application. It looks like it encoded if base64 and its custom implementation, the contents of the flag.txt file. So with the context here, we were given this output from what was probably the original flag.txt. Now we just need to reverse this operation and see what was the plain text flag value originally. We need to to undo this custom base64 implementation. But this is Rust code. And I don't know, uh, I don't really want to have to deal with it. And especially this custom implementation of base64. Could we just give this to ChatGPT and say, hey, you know what? I understand what it does now. Can we undo that operation? Even because we know it's base64, if we're given this output, well, it's a custom base64 implementation with a unique and non-standard character set. It's not regular base64. So that means I can't go to my terminal and try to echo, oh, the actual original output of this 
and pipe it to base 64 tac D because it's not gonna be the regular character set. So let's grab all this code yet again and ask ChatGPT if it can write code to reverse it. I understand this is Rust code for a custom base 64 implementation with a non-standard character set. Can you add functionality to the source code to be able to decode data? I was given this output and I want to see the decoded plain text value. Let's grab or copy and paste the original output, slap that there, and now let's grab the source code again. Couple back ticks and we'll paste that in. Now, while ChatGPT is cooking this up and really solving the CTF challenge for us, I wanna tell you about a really cool event that's coming up that's, again, all online, totally free, you know the drill. But Sneak is hosting a session coming up on Wednesday, November 15th, where you can get into exploiting AI-generated code. In just one hour, you'll create a demo application all with AI and then learn how to exploit it. You'll actually learn a little bit more about different vulnerabilities, things like buffer overflow, SQL injection, all the things that could be taken advantage of. And when they're created from AI generated code, you can then learn how to be secure in code that you might use from ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot or anything. It should be a whole lot of fun. And I'll admit, I'm looking forward to this one. I'm going to attend because I think this is crazy pertinent, especially to all the stuff that we're using ChatGPT and AI for. Remember, it's all virtual. It's completely free. It is coming up on Wednesday, November 15th. 15th, and you can register right now. There is a link below in the video description, jh.live slash sneak AI. I hope to see you there. All right, let's see what ChatGPT is cooking up. To add functionality to decode data, we must reverse the process of encoding. Yes, exactly. All right, looks like it's all cutting it together here. It is still including the custom character set that we saw present in the source code for this base64 implementation. Looks like there is a new main function where it's actually including the encoded data that we provided offered from the CTF board, and it's gonna go ahead and decode it with the new function that's built out to tell us the decoded data. Looks like all that functionality is just the reverse of what was given in the encoded capability. And that's it. In the main function, we call this new decode function and it provides the encoded string that we offered and we could just try to use this with our Rust code. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this. Let's get back to our terminal and let's go modify the source code main.rs Rust file and let's remove all of the original data, all of the source code that we started with and try to use this copy that ChatGPT helped us put together. We can go ahead and cargo build and run this. Let's see, I will cargo build. A couple warnings, okay, maybe we didn't use some of the libraries that we imported, but that is a-okay. Let's see if I can now cargo run. And there it is. Hey, still whining about some of those warnings here, but look, this is our decoded data, and here is the flag. The actual, real, plain text flag that we needed to solve that CTF challenge that we can submit on the scoreboard. We'll go ahead, slap that in, and submit. Okay, now obviously ChatGPT basically did all of this for us. Well, it was honestly framed in an easy and simple way. That's why it was part of the warm-ups category with, you know what? Hey, here's the source code. Here's everything that you need to work with. We just kind of need to manipulate it, even if it has this custom character set, to just reverse that base64 implementation. But we got to use ChatGPT to be able to identify that, tell us it's Rust code, and then be able to manipulate it and play with it the way that we wanted to, to decode the original output and get the flag. Well, that's a small example. It's some of the crazy cool stuff that we can do with generative AI. And honestly, you know what? I'm sure it is helping speed run some of your developer experience or your ethical hacking, pen testing, red team bug bounty experience, right? So I hope that was a cool cutesy showcase. And if you'd like, please do jump into Sneak's AI workshop where they're getting into that live hacking, exploiting generated AI code. Again, link in the video description. That is jh.live slash sneak AI. Thank you so much for watching. Please do those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.